I don't know what you know or don't know about melanoma, but we'll take the next few minutes to hopefully make you a melanoma expert since you've just been diagnosed with melanoma, let you know what melanoma is, how we treat it, and based upon your particular situation, there may be some differences in how we treat you versus another patient with melanoma. Melanoma is a type of skin cancer that arises from the melanocytes or the pigmented cells of the body. So unless somebody's an albino, everybody's at risk for getting melanoma. There are some risk factors that we know about, sun exposure, uh, ultraviolet radiation. Uh, there are certain abnormal or funny pigmented moles that tend to run in families, but a lot of people get melanoma just for bad luck, and you can also get melanoma where the sun doesn't shine. So basically, any place that there's skin, you're at risk for getting melanoma. Melanoma kind of gets a bad reputation. People often talk about it's the, one of the worst cancers that you can have, but that's not really true. Uh, the vast majority of patients with melanoma will actually do very well. So for example, if, if you look at the number of new melanomas in the United States each year, the incidence has been going up. Um, but because of early detection, patient awareness, uh, doctors sending their patients for biopsies of suspicious moles, uh, the death rate is actually flat. So we're actually doing a very good job in terms of finding melanoma early and treating it. Uh, every once in a while, melanoma does do some funny things, and that's where it gets the bad reputation. So for example, it's one of the few cancers, and it's only a couple percent of the time, where instead of just going from the tumor to the lymph nodes, it will actually go through the lymphatic tubes, almost like getting on a subway and getting off in the tunnel before you get to the next stop. That's called in-transit disease. Again, it's, it's very rare, but there, in that situation, there are some specific things we would do. If the person's melanoma learns to go to distant organs, it also can go to any organ. Some cancers just tend to go to the liver, just to the lungs. Uh, melanoma can go through the bloodstream to other lymph nodes, the intestines, the vital organs such as the brain, the pancreas. So in an advanced situation, uh, we take all complaints by the patient seriously, anything that's abnormal, uh, because melanoma can do some weird things. But for most people, it's really not gonna be much different than any other cancer. With any type of cancer, we do what's called staging. And a good way to think about staging is we're just sorting the person into a group. Is there a high risk of the tumor spreading versus a low risk of the tumor spreading? We use some primary features when the patient's diagnosed with melanoma to put them into a certain stage. And you'll see that we're then able to get some additional information in certain situations. So the first thing that we care about is actually the thickness of your melanoma. And that's measured in millimeters. That's called Breslow thickness. In general, a melanoma that's less than one millimeter thick is considered very thin and low risk, so a very low chance of it metastasizing to the lymph nodes or the distant organs. A melanoma over four millimeters thick is considered a thick melanoma. That would be a higher risk. The next feature that we look at is what's called ulceration. That's not that you scratched the mole and it was bleeding or it was itchy. It's actually when the pathologist looks under the microscope and the tumor's growing so quickly, the surface or the epidermis is missing. So that is a high risk feature. If you have ulceration, it would bump you up to the next stage as compared to what it would be based upon the primary tumor thickness. For thinner melanomas, the last thing that we look at is what's called mitotic index. And that's basically where the pathologist looks around the microscope slide and counts the number of dividing cells per each little area. For a thin melanoma, if the mitotic index is less than one, that's very low risk. If it is one or higher, it starts to act a little bit more like a melanoma that would be over one millimeter thick. The stages for primary melanomas run from 1A to 1B, 2A, 2B, and 2C. So that would be primary melanomas, and each one of those has a sort of an anticipated risk of having lymph node and or distant spread. In addition to those features, there are some other features that we look at to give you a somewhat more individualized prognosis, and that's because a staging system is, is a balance between being accurate but also being simple. So if we had too many features in the staging system, it would be difficult to give you a diagnosis for the average person. But things that don't show up on the staging system but are still important are actually your age. As people get older, the melanoma starts to change in terms of how it behaves. So for a younger person, there's a higher risk of the melanoma going to lymph nodes, but a lower risk of going to the distant organs, and that actually flips as the patient gets older. There's a higher risk for distant spread and a lower risk for lymph node spread. In general, men tend to do a little bit worse than women, so that's something that you can't change, but that also plays into the you know, your prognosis or your risk of it spreading. And then the final thing is the location on the body. So melanomas on the arms and legs tend to metastasize a little bit less than if they're on the trunk, which is also less than the head and neck. So although we can calculate a very specific risk for you, uh, in general, we tend to use basically the Breslow thickness and the ulceration to put you into one of the primary stages. When a person is diagnosed with melanoma, 
there are certain things that we need to do, things that we don't really need to do, and things that we can do. So I know it sounds a little bit like an a la carte restaurant menu, uh, but we'll go through each one of those things in a little bit more detail based upon your situation. In the absence of distant spread, the potentially curative treatment for a melanoma or the thing that we need to do is what's called a wide excision. And basically that's taking the full thickness of the skin where the primary melanoma developed. Uh, there'll be another educational video that we'll discuss a little bit more detail about what a wide excision entails and what to expect. One of the things we don't need to do is get routine blood work or imaging. Uh, basically, if you're not having any suspicious or concerning symptoms, your physical examination is normal, there, the chances that blood work, a chest x-ray, a CAT scan, or a PET scan will show you that your tumor has spread even though you have no symptoms is extremely low. If you develop new abdominal pain, new headaches, or on physical examination we feel a new mass in your abdomen, we'll get whatever tests we need to to get to the bottom of it and find out what it is. Uh, in some ways though that would be no different than if you didn't have melanoma. If you started having several days of abdominal pain, you would call your primary care doctor, go to the emergency room, and get a CAT scan. Uh, because it isn't just melanoma on the list of possibilities. It could be diverticulitis, a hernia, your gallbladder. Uh, I like to remind patients that you don't get a get out of life free card. Just because you've had cancer doesn't mean at some point in your life you're not going to get other symptoms that have nothing to do with your melanoma. What's sometimes difficult for the patient and for us as the team, and we're here to help you, is sorting out which of those symptoms, the new headaches or which abnormal findings, have something to do with your melanoma that we need to treat or that we simply just need to figure out that it isn't and we can watch it safely. One of the things that we can do, and it would be based on the appropriate situation, is what's called a sentinel lymph node biopsy. Basically, this is a test to find out right now whether your tumor has microscopically spread to the lymph nodes that drain that piece of skin. That will be discussed in another educational video to follow.